Hello, welcome to my tutorial on how to install Snow Leopard. Uh, there's a couple of things you're going to need before you even get started. One is you're going to need the retail disc of Mac OS Snow Leopard installed DVD uh, that runs on Amazon for about $24.99, $5 for shipping. Two, you're going to need to download and burn to a CD, DVD, either one, it doesn't matter the Empire EFI. Uh, that's about 20 to 40 megabytes depending on which version you have to download. And last but not least, you're going to need a spare hard drive to install Mac OS on. Uh, it could be from 60 gigabytes to 1 terabyte, 2 terabytes. I personally recommend 500 gigabytes and up. Your personal preference is yours. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is boot your computer up. Uh, you're going to want to get into your BIOS settings. Depending on which brand of computer you have, who the manufacturer is, it's going to be different to get into it. Some computers use a delete key as mine does. Some use F8, some use F2. Just make sure you can find a way to get into your BIOS settings. Next thing you want to do is make sure that the hard drive that you're going to be installing Snow Leopard onto is first priority that it's the first hard drive to be booted from and then you're going to save the changes now as this is rebooting open your disk drive put the Empire EFI disk into the drive and you're going to prompt your computer to load from the CD drive first Now the CD that you just put in there, it's basically a bootloader. It's loading the information into RAM and once it's done loading, you can take that CD out, the Empire EFI disk that you burnt. You can take that out once it's done and then you'll be able to throw the Mac OS X Snow Leopard install DVD in and as it says at the bottom of this screen you can hit F5 and it will refresh so you can see it and once you see Mac OS X install DVD you hit enter on it now this is gonna look like your computer is kinda freaking out all this white text is gonna be going down the screen you're not gonna know what's going on it's fine this, it's doing what it should be doing It should only take about a minute. I spent, I'm spent. i speeding all these loading parts up so you don't have to sit here and watch the whole thing in its original time. Once you get in, you choose your language. And then you're going to want to go to Utilities. And then Disk Utility, I believe it is. Yes, Disk Utility. here's where you're going to want to find your hard drive and you can partition it any way you want one partition, two, sixteen, twelve just make sure that the partitions you're going to install Snow Leopard on is Mac OS Extended Journaled if you don't have it in that format it will not work also I didn't show it in the video but when you click options down there at the bottom it should be GUID formatted if, you, if it has any of the other ones selected this will also not work now you're going to locate the hard drive that you're going to install Mac on go to customize and you can choose your options I turn on Rosetta and QuickTime I leave languages off and I put on all printers just in case I use a printer. And then you're going to hit install. This usually takes about 20 to 30 minutes. It usually says 30 minutes, but sometimes it's faster than that. I'm going to speed this up again. Okay, once it's done, you're going to restart. Uh, 
while your computer is restarting after this black screen, reinsert the Empire EFI disk back into your computer and boot from the disk. Snow Leopard is not yet ready to run off the hard drive by itself, so you're going to need that bootloader disk to boot back into it. But this time, you're going to hit the Apple sign. Don't put the Snow Leopard back in or you'll end up reinstalling over what you just did. And you should get the welcome screen from Apple if all went well with the install. Once you're in, it's going to ask you all the usual stuff Mac asks you when you first launch. I usually hit my computer does not connect. I don't believe you have to put in your real information here. I always do, so that's why I blurred it. And your password, your account name. You can hit register later and register now. I don't know what it does. Make sure you change your time. Sometimes the time is not right when you first install this. And here's your desktop. It's going to ask you what kind of keyboard you're using. Then you're going to want to go into the Empire EFI disk, into the post installation, and then launch My Hack Installer. You click Continue, 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 Agree, and then Customize. Leave the ones that are on, on, and then you're going to pick the Graphics Enabler and the Sleep, sleep Enabler. Enter your password when you click Install. And I'm going to speed this up again. This usually takes about five minutes. It says two, but it takes longer than that. And you're going to want to let this run. What this is doing is it's actually installing the bootloader onto the hard drive and inside Mac. So after this is done installing, you won't need to put the Empire EFI disk in anymore. You'll be able to run Mac OS straight out of here. Okay, as you see, sound doesn't work. I didn't really show it in the video, but the internet doesn't work right now and that's where the next part comes in you're gonna to wanna to go to www.kexts.com that's kext.com those are where you're gonna find your Mac driver so you can get your sound working and your ethernet working and you, if graphics enabler didn't work for you from the uh, my hack installer if the graphics enabler didn't work from there you want to get your graphics from there you're also going to want to get a utility that I'm about to show called kext utility that's what that's the way you're going to be installing your kext you basically take your kext you drag it into it and it will install Now, if you would like to try the text and the uh, package files that I have that work for my machine, which I'm using on screen right now, uh, there will be a download link for all of this. It'll be in one zip file. It'll come with all the all three versions of the Empire EFI disk: one for i5s and i7s, the CPUs; one for dual cores and single cores; and then there's a legacy one uh, that'll also come with that and it'll come with a few package files and kex that I use so you can try and see if they work for your machine installing kex is just like Windows installing drivers it's pretty much hit and miss if you install the wrong driver it's not really going to do anything but that means your hardware isn't going to work so you're going to want to keep trying different kex to see what works with your hardware 
Okay. Once you're once you installed the Kex, you want to see if they're working. So you're going to want to reboot and then go back into Mac. And that's how you would check to see if your hardware is working with those drivers. Okay, sound works and my graphics work. These are 1080p monitors and it's a 1920 by 1080. And check and see if my Ethernet works, which it does. It just launched Safari. And as you can see here, I'm checking for new software updates. And just like any other OS, you're going to want to keep up to date. So you're going to want to upgrade to 10.6.6. .6. But there's only one problem. If you upgrade to 10.6.6 .6 and you just restart, it's going to mess it completely up. You're going to want to install the legacy kernel. And that's where this part comes in. There, this will also be in the download link. You're going to download the software update make sure it's the Mac OS X combine download that but it's gonna ask you to restart do not hit restart yet you're gonna wanna launch the legacy kernel 10.6.5 installer and then uncheck force 64 bit you don't need that leave legacy kernel on hit install enter your password And then once that's done installing, you're going to click close. And then now you can hit that restart button. It's going to go through and verify that everything is going in there okay. And it's going to install all of that software that you just checked off iTunes and the combine and then you're gonna do it's gonna automatically reboot once you're done then you can boot back in the snow leopard and once you're back into snow leopard you should be on 10.6.6 .6, which also happens to have the max app store as you can see down in the lower dock there's 10.6.6 .6. so once you install that legacy kernel you're good basically good to go on installing any more software updates I clicked on it here but I didn't really install anything I could install those that do show up but I chose not to at least not yet I'll, I'll do them they're not really necessary right now. I just wanted that 10.6.6 .6 to have FaceTime capabilities and uh, the App Store, which I have bought a few games and a few utilities out of the App Store, and they work fine on my Hackintosh. And if you follow those little steps, you should be fine. Uh, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Uh, tell me how I did. If you have any questions, leave them down below. And thanks for watching. I'll check you out next time.